Alrighty, good evening. This is Jonathan Albin, also known as Game Master J, and this is Nyko's Nightly News. Tonight we've got stories coming from two very different ends of the world, and we will be talking about that in a moment, but for the, for the time being, I wanted to thank you for being here with us. If you aren't familiar with the channel, this is Nyko's RPG, and this is the Fantasy Realm of Nyko's, which is the game world that I run sessions in uh, roughly five times a week. So we will be t looking at stories that are going on in and around the environs where the players are familiar. And in, the, in that time, we will talk about specific locations where they might be. And then we also talk about other places in the world where there are uh, things of import that have become globally known through a very intricate news system created by the gnomes. But there's a whole story there. We'll do an actual in-depth on them in the near future. In the meantime, if you haven't uh, before and you like the channel, go ahead, if you haven't uh, yet, go ahead and follow the channel here on Twitch. And also watch for our videos to be regularly uploaded on YouTube at Nikos RPG as well. So before we get started, let's go ahead and talk about where we're going to be. Alrighty, on the map of Nikos, we're going to be looking at two locations. We are going to be looking at Barbas, which is the pirate capital of the Twain Sea. And we are going to be looking at Gilder, which as yet has not actually been placed on the map, but is in this air general area here. Uh, these two kingdoms are not obviously bordering one another and there's a lot of conflict going on everywhere but the story does continue no matter where you are in the world so by giving updates and information it perhaps gives guidance to the players on which areas they want to go and visit and may also instill uh, you as a part of the audience to want to pursue information in those areas in which case we are constantly building new campaign groups so just be aware that we're we're looking at those opportunities as well. So we're, let's go ahead and start off with Barbus, shall we? All right. Alrighty. So Barbus is a sea-based kingdom, although they are they have some significant land holdings from their event, many, many iterations protecting their own. But uh, the city of the Sea Princes overlooks what is the largest uh, combined piracy operation uh, in both the Twain and Outer Seas. So the information coming from there is not only going to influence what's going on in that particular kingdom, but anywhere where the sea re reaches the land, so to speak. So let's go over these. First of all, the formal alliance has been renewed with Mercia. As you may know, Mercia is a major military force across the sea on the uh, uh, continent of Gralim, and they are, are well known for being an entrenched uh, soldiery for those who are downtrodden and such. The, the Mercians have been known to support uh, through uh, their mercenary forces and trade mechanisms uh, the development of whole new countries and are in, in a particular uh, a, a particular ally of the newly formed country of Elwendale. We'll talk more about that in the future. At this point, realize that this renewed uh, agreement prevents the pirates from raiding cities under the Mercian banner, but it also provides a income source to the the pirates um, through the uh, the landing of their ships in these occupied territories, there is a uh, protection fee somewhat that is uh, agree has been agreed to, and so therefore, this guarantees a safe travel for m most uh, ports along the Twain Sea, in particular, and to a lesser degree the outer sea. In particular, the east coast of Yarlam will be problematic because, as you'll see, there's a conflict developing with uh, both the Mir and other coastal properties on the east coast of Yarlam. We'll come back to that. 
So uh, just this last week, uh, the Maruk, which have not been heard from in close to 100 years, have actually clashed with Prince Fithian in the northern part of the Twain Sea. It appeared to be that the Maruk battle flotilla was uh, was intending to uh, land at Tirkun, but the uh, cleverness of Prince Fithian did break up that flotilla and drive it back into the black waters. So it's uh, the raids have been increasingly uh, volatile, and the Mar the Maruk have. Seemed like seemingly taken advantage of the better navigation now that the uh, astral pattern has uh, revealed itself. But nonetheless, Prince Fithian, when when it, when asked about it, uh, stated he was fairly uh, confident that there would not be any sufficient landing of the Maruk for at least the foreseeable future. Uh, because of this, however, Twain Sea operations among the pirate, the pirate princes has uh, increased uh, greatly. The combined operations have taken kind of a front seat compared to the independent operations of the past. And when asked about that, the sea princes have collectively uh, responded with no, no response, uh, no comment at all. On the southern front, when you near the end, the southern end of Yarlam, there was a conflict with uh, an actually an engagement with a mere submersible, and it has sparked controversy because up until this point, the mere fleet have been uh, pretty clever about maintaining their secrecy, and their movements have been rather circumspect. Well, this is the first time that an open uh, cargo vessel was engaged on the surface by one of the one or more of the pirates, uh, pirate princes, and this has sparked controversy on whether or not the previously devised uh, intercoastal alliance will be able to be held. Because Mir has such a strong connection with Bylon, and Bylon has been such a critical trade partner with the Sea Pirates, this is maybe problematic, and so we're watching out for that. Now, this also happens to coincide rather neatly with the launch of the first Sky Galleon endeavor by the Pirates of Barbas. This Sky Galleon has a displacement of nearly three times the largest oceanic vessel in their fleet and rivals the rumored size of a seed craft that was uh, under, under the control of the Primus Eldrin. There is concern about whether this will be seen as a provocation by the highland species, but at this point, the Primus has, have not responded at all to the launch. In a similar story, the Order of Falan has reinstated itself at a temple uh, in the city of Tassara, south of Barbas, and the city is not yet established within the trade routes and at this point have been provided support predominantly from the uh, Kingdom of the Kells, a small city-state that doesn't even register on localized maps yet. And these uh, worshippers from the Kells are bringing back and reestablishing the regular and organized rituals of the ancient order. And in particular, because the temple at Tassara was during a previous iteration some time back, the centerpiece of the Falunese faithful around the world. So this may be something significant, but it may not. We will definitely be keeping our eyes on this story. Now, Prince Kale, 
who is the, the descendant of the family of the Kells, uh, though he, of course, splintered off and joined his joined the fraternal brethren of Barbas, uh, did respond to the mere incursion article, saying that if the mortals make another move, they may find themselves in the eye of the what was the way he worded it um pardon me for my distraction here i just saw a typo i gotta fix it it's driving me crazy Oh, yeah, beauty is in the eye of the broadcast. I'm oh, sorry, that the uh, that, that he will find himself in the eye of the broadcaster. So this is a reference, of course, to the eighth iteration first broadcast, which called for the elimination of mortal populations with impunity. Uh, that was later, within a few weeks, rescinded by a second broadcast that seemed to be uh, coming from the same person, albeit with some nuanced differences that establish mortals as equal with their brethren on Nikos. And even to this day, they are still considered to be somewhat of the outsiders. All right. And then finally, the... Uh, there has been a move by the pirate princes in calling for the first subsurface negotiations to begin. And this is interesting because they have specifically not invited the Mir to this conversation, claiming that they only wish to speak to those species that are true denizens of the deep. And this is a clear uh, affront or insult to the mayor who have spent the last 300 years keeping the peace and maintaining a, a fair relationship with the surface dwellers. Nonetheless, this will be a rather charged meeting in the future, and those that are interested in gathering inf more information should, if they can, get a chance to visit the city before the conversations begin somewhere around Christmas Day this year. Uh, next, Barbos is now officially a a seeking redress as this Mermadi surface fleet did uh, break the agreement that had been the intercoastal alliance, and therefore they're looking for a financial redress or at least some kind of compensation for the damage done to their credibility. And we'll, of course, have to see what comes of that in the future. All righty, let's go back here for a second. So before we get on to our next story, I want to thank you for being here so far. Nikos Nightly News does cover the stories of the world of Nikos, but we are also in a bit of a uh, promotional drive because we are increasing our visual presence at the Board Game Paradise store. And so uh, for more information on this and our other activities, do check out our Patreon account at patreon.com slash Nikos. Uh, 